your, uh, your behavior, your social aspect. No, it's because energy does that. That's just the way of this earth. And when those energies are repelling, you can burn up the energy or the energy can drive you apart. How you keep a balance is sometimes it's best for her to sleep in the other room or you to sleep in the other room. You got to take a break on that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. It's best for you to sleep in the other room. Um, this way you can balance out these particular, uh, these particular energies. You see what I'm saying? Um, that's one social way of dealing with it. The tantric way is if the male retains his semen by learning the tantric way of not ejaculating, then what will happen here is he will draw in her energy and as a result she can draw in his energy because that's just her nature anyway. Um, he will draw in her energy and by him drawing in her energy, the energy will be a part of him and it will be stored in him and the desire will never go away. But too often his sexual desire for her, every time he ejaculates, he loses that desire. Mm. And that's why you notice some men don't want to touch the woman right after sex. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Because he's lost his energy. So if you can, if, can you imagine every time you do some stuff, you coming and coming and coming, after a while, you will use up that desire. Mm. You see? If you don't learn the tantric way on doing those particular, doing that, doing that particular aspect, there is an, uh, another alternative, mm -hmm. and it might not be favorable to the Western world, but we have to consider two aspects of this. One is polygamy, mm -hmm. not necessarily in the marriage aspect, right, right. but not necessarily so many multiple partners, but you, but it would be healthy to have. I'm just talking about an alternative, right, right. something we don't want to deal with now. I'm not telling you to go out, but I'm just trying to say one of the alternatives is, is to, to balance your thing out with other partners. Mm. Or if not, multiple partners, at least one other partner. Mm. And that way you can keep the flow going and the interest in between the two. It would actually enhance some people's relationship. But this can go all the way too because usually when we say this multiple partner, I don't want to say the word polygamy or whatever, but I also want to use the word polyandry because it is also to the point where as the woman could very well have another partner too. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a male thing whereas, because um, we also deal with relationships, whereas he could convince you to take on a second wife, but this is unheard of when you're talking about going out and doing this particular thing. This is, this, is, this is a part of the ancient system, whereas one of the systems was we know that before there was polygamy, there was polyandry. And polyandry was the woman had multiple partners. And as the time went on and the the ratio of men fell, be, be, uh, fell below a certain percentage. It was the woman that produced a form of polyandry to the male in the aspect of polygamy so that they could have a balance so her sisters could have access to males that, not uh, males in the society when, it, when, when, when things fell to a certain level. And, uh, and this is and not disturb the equilibrium. Deep. That's deep. Yeah. You say that. That goes into uh, it's almost like being conscious out here. There's not too many. It's an imbalance. Right. I heard last night when you were talking, mm -hmm. a sister said there's more conscious men. Right. Than there are women. Uh. -huh. And and the most of the conscious men go after. Well, that's a whole lot of shit. Conscious uh -huh. men go after sisters. They ain't conscious. Uh. -huh. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. Um, uh huh. That's some deep shit. So. Yeah. Would that. Be for conscious sisters to have more. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, we're at an age of enlightenment where all things should be considered. Right, right. 
you know, we don't deal with taboos because taboos is what got us here in the first place. Right. So my point here is it shouldn't be that inconceivable mm -hmm. when we have sisters that mess around anyway, yeah. just like we got brothers that mess around anyway. The key here is, is to build an equilibrium or ecological system of honesty right. that she can get, you can, both the male and the female can get used to the idea of somebody else. And also, too, this can neutralize the jealousy aspect. Right. You know, they showed on, on HBO uh, 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 this, this polyandry type of um, retreat that they went on. Oh, yeah. Whereas um, you, you, you go in there with your husband and stuff. Well, this one is a little, yeah, well, swingers already got the notion. Right. This, this is a little before you get to the swinging aspect. Right, right. Whereas they take a, a weekend. And you go up here and you take your wife and you got to see your wife being caressed and enjoying right. another person. Right. You see what I'm saying? As well as she has to see you enjoying another woman. Mm -hmm. She has to see you joining a, uh, enjoying another male. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And as a result, it breaks down certain jealousies that were just programmed based on your social society or your culture. Now my point here is if you was raised in a society where it was free to love who you wanted and that's all you knew, that would be just as normal mm -hmm. as a person saying that you're only supposed to be with that one person. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, so we, we, we're still going back to your training. Right. You see, your training, and sometimes we need to break down our training, our taboos that is given to us, not by choice, but because we're born in a certain culture. Right. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to get back to something else you just were talking about, but I want to know one thing about pertaining to this question. It says something about, uh, what was it say? Oh, now you're talking about tangible, but what about certain rituals that we can do? Uh... At this particular point, in the spirit world, two people can do together. In the spirit world, at this particular time, rituals do work. And through a ritual, dealing with certain entities in the spirit world, in some kind of way it's done, that we have lost the science to. All things are possible. Especially when you're dealing with magic. The mystery here is, it's going to have to be, in this particular time, it cannot be an old ritual. Right. <coughs> or something, or something that is, uh, something that is, that has been given years ago, tried by many people, and it's burnt out. Yeah. It has to be a ritual <clears throat> that is made up between the two people and it has to be one that's new. So I say again, the best rituals are the ones you create yourself. Right. You say, but how do I have, how do I know it's going to work? For the mere fact, you can create something in a ceremony to add some type of energies or deities or whatever to help you means that it, it's coming from the inside of you and it's your own soul telling you what expressions, you see what I'm saying, and what is needed to bring this about. So yes, you can do it, but the question here is, with rituals, it's not for me to give you what type of ritual, it's for you to give yourself and create what type of ritual? Because we're dealing with creativity. But they do work. With, with they would. They they energy. do work. There's rituals for everything. You just have to make up one. Okay. Now, they, now we got that out the way. Okay. That goes back to something I made a comment about. Mm -hmm. Is love? Can you experience the real high level crown chakra love you talking about? Like traveling through the heart chakra with somebody that's not conscious. Ultimately, no. All right. What can happen is, mm 